after playing The Sims 3 since I was 9 years old, I just recently introduced Reshade into my own game. And wow, what a visual difference Reshade makes to this 14 year old game. This video is going to show you step by step how I added Reshade to my Sims 3 game so yours too can look beautiful. Before we begin, I just wanted to note that I make my tutorials accessible and understandable over explaining everything, no matter your tech savviness. If I'm talking slow or over explaining, please be understanding that there are others that may not understand or learn as fast. What exactly is Reshade? According to Google, Reshade is a generic post-processing injector for games and video software developed by Crosshair. What does that even mean? I think I can show you better than I can tell you. Yeah, it basically makes the game look downright gorgeous by enhancing the shadows, adding depth of field, which is that nice blurry background, and amplifying the vibrancy and saturation. How do we install Reshade? Most tutorials of Reshade you see will instruct you to install Reshade using the official release on the reshade.me site. Using this official download with my guide will work fine. However, I have to tell you that newer versions of Reshade have an automatic feature that will toggle off certain effects like the nice blurry background and depth of field if Reshade detects any internet connectivity with your game. As you may or may not know, The Sims 3 version 1.69, which was the final update released for The Sims 3, actually does have internet connectivity. This means that after a while or even immediately, the blurry background effect depth of field in Reshade will stop working. If you're wondering why would Reshade implement something like this to spare you an over explanation, it's to save users from getting banned on certain online games that have an anti-cheat system. Luckily, getting banned is not a risk for us. The Sims 3 is not an online game despite having internet connectivity. So we can get around this by using a modded installation of Reshade provided by a member of the community that has tinkered around to disable this automatic feature. Don't worry, it installs all the same way. And I promise you it's safe. I would not be using it myself if it weren't. In the description box below, I have left a link to this GitHub page right here. We're going to download this file on top, Reshade Setup 5.2.2 modded.exe. If you are watching this far into the future, I may have left a different version. Don't worry, this will set up all the same way. Once you click download and run the installer, Windows is going to shoot you a message that says something like this. This, Windows protected your PC. As aforementioned, this is a modded version of Reshade that changes the depth buffer function so that the nice blurry background won't turn off when Reshade detects internet connectivity. So that is why Windows is shooting you this message. All you have to do is hit more info right here. And as you can see, it says unknown publisher. As I said in the beginning of this video, Reshade is actually by a developer named Crosire. But because this is modded, it's saying unknown publisher, which is why Windows is prompting you with this warning. But anyway, we're going to hit run anyway. Once again, this is going to give you a warning. Do not, do not, do not install this on a multiplayer game. There is a reason why this is only meant for single player games. Use regular reshade on any multiplayer game. This is going to bring up every single .exe file you have on your computer sorted in alphabetical order. We're going to do this the easy way. We're going to come down here to browse. We're going to go to our desktop and we are going to find our Sims 3 icon. If you deleted this icon on your desktop, don't worry. There's an easy way we can find it. If you come down here to the little magnifying glass or the Windows start menu here, we can type in the Sims 3 and then come over and hit open file location. And then it's going to bring this up. We're going to right click on it again and hit open file location. And then this is where we need to be. For everyone that has their desktop icon still, we can just right click on it and hit open file location and it will bring us to the same exact place. Now, no matter how you navigated to 
to your Sims 3 installation location, we are all going to click on the same exact file that we install reshade with ts3.exe if yours does not say .exe that is completely fine that's just because i have my file name extensions on so we're going to click on ts3 we're going to hit open here we're going to go to next we are going to select microsoft direct x9 we're going to hit next this is going to say select preset to install it might be blank for you there might be one here i'm going to hit next anyway and then i'm also going to go ahead and check all these these are effects that reshade creators so the people who make the beautiful filters and everything like that they build their preset off of all of these packages right here so you want to make sure you have these because when you go out in the wild you know on tumblr or wherever you are planning to get your reshade presets from most reshade preset creators build their presets off of these so we're going to install all of them we're going to hit next here and that is going to go ahead and install everything you want to give it a second and make sure you're letting everything install giving it a good run and then it's saying successfully installed reshade click the finish button to exit the setup tool so we're going to hit finish down here i am going to go to my sims 3 icon on my desktop if you are wondering why mine looks like this instead of the actual sims 3 icon that is because I have lazy duchess's smoothness patch which I have many videos on my channel about that if you want to find out how to make your game nice and smooth but I'm going to go ahead and launch the sims 3 and we are going to get into setting up reshade so on the top here you can see it says reshade 5.2.2 you're gonna want to make sure that it says that for me it says an update is available don't worry we need to be on this version of reshade because as I mentioned we need the modded version of reshade to use with the sims 3. as you can see it says compiling 33 effects remaining so all those effects we just installed it is compiling those together just give it a second let it run your game also might be very very slow right now it's because you're not only launching the sims 3 but you're also installing the reshade presets so while these are all compiling i'm going to come down here to my options menu here on my home page these are my settings for my game now one thing that we all need to have as the same setting here is edge smoothing edge smoothing needs to be off the rest of the stuff in here doesn't really matter i have everything on high minus high detail lots so now that we have let our reshade compile it is going to now say reshade is now installed successfully press the home button to start the tutorial depending on how big of a keyboard you have you may or may not have a home button you have to just see where reshade is binding your home menu so we're gonna go over here and yeah now we have reshade open i'm gonna hit skip the tutorial and i'm gonna go over here first and foremost to my settings i'm going to rebind the key that i open up reshade with so as you may or may not know to turn the walls up and down in the sims 3 and all sims games for that matter it is actually the home button so i use that quite frequently and i don't want that to conflict so a setting that i found is really good that i'm not touching or i'm not knocking my hands into shift and f12 i find to be really good to just open and close reshade really quickly so if i go and hit shift at 12 now it will open and close that reshade menu next up the effect toggle key i put on shift f10 this turns on and off your reshade effects the next setting that i have in here is previous preset key i like to turn this to shift and f8 this lets you swap between reshade presets we don't have any in here right now but we'll get some in a second and last but not least the last thing i do is the screenshot key i like to leave this on print screen you may want to change this but what you will definitely want to do is change where your screenshots are being spit out so by default they go in your sims 3 installation directory i don't like mine there unfortunately with reshade you have to navigate through this menu in order to get to wherever you want to go i made a folder in my pictures in reshade and then i made a sims 3 because i also have reshade for the sims 2 so i wanted to differentiate this is where my pictures are set up to go so if you can see here mine's users hobbies my username on my computer and then pictures reshade the sims 3 so i just navigated to where that folder is so closing up settings here we're actually going to go over to the home tab on top in the home tab here we're going to come down to edit global preprocessor definitions we're going to click on this and this is going to give some things that i don't understand what they mean but what i do know is that reshade depth input is reversed by default set to one we're going to want to turn this to zero make sure you set that to zero and it's going to recompile your reshade after you change that. So just let it do its magic, let it put it together for a moment. 
So now that we have Reshade installed, let's go ahead and actually get some presets on our computer so we can use them in our game. One of my favorite places to look for presets is actually by a creator named erasabledinosaur.tumblr.com. This may look different depending on how far out into the future you're watching this video, but as of uploading, there is a nice little guide here. So I'm gonna go to Sims 3 Reshade Presets. There's a couple to choose from here, depending on what you like. So there's some nice photos. They always have amazing photos and I really like how you can see with no reshade and then with reshade a nice blurry background the nice saturation adjustment you may also know this creator by their preset called daydream which is just so beautiful add some saturation blurry background and this is actually the one i use in my game i'm gonna go ahead and show you how i install this so we're gonna come down here we can download daydream here windows is giving me a blocked because it's dangerous don't worry it's not dangerous i'm gonna go ahead and cut this file that we just installed i'm gonna once again navigate to wherever i installed the sims 3 so i'm gonna use that trick i used before where i go to my desktop icon go to open file location and then i'm gonna go ahead and just paste this daydream and you can actually have your game open when you do this you don't have to close it down something to note here is that this preset luckily erasable dinosaur included hotkeys and i'm going to show you what those do here in just a second back in our sims 3 game we're going to open reshade so that is that shift an f12 key that we set up before or if you didn't change it it'll still be the home key we're going to navigate to the home tab and click this drop down menu i'm going to scroll down to the daydream tutorial preset i actually went ahead and tweaked this preset to my liking but this is what it'll look like in your game it's very bright it's very vibrant I'm loaded into my Sims 3 game here, and this is kinda what we're working with right now. It's looking a little bright and like overexposed. It's pretty, but I'm going to actually go ahead and further tweak it just to show you guys what you can truly do with Reshade. The first thing I am going to do is drag this window so I can see the UI because my main concern right now is how overexposed the UI is looking, especially with my clean UI. And that'll lead to this bloom option here. You can see immediately when I remove the bloom, everything comes into focus a little bit better for my personal preference. I like to keep this off. As you can see, luckily Erasable Dinosaur did include this on a hotkey for precisely this reason right here. So I can turn it off with the F7 key on my keyboard. In addition, because we have to turn off edge smoothing when we use reshade, I'm gonna go ahead and add some artificial edge smoothing in with reshade, which is this MSAA effect right here. You can toggle it off and on and you can see MSAA really does add some edge smoothing last but not least one thing i love about reshade is mxao i'm gonna scroll through this list here and find the effect they're luckily in alphabetical order and it's mxao q i n t underscore mxao dot fx if you don't have this right here when we were installing the packages earlier you probably didn't check mxao so go back to the installation portion of this video and make sure you have that package selected as you can tell immediately when i turn this on everything gains a lot more shadow to show what the world Looks like I'll zoom out a little bit and just toggle that on and off here. So here's without and here's with just adds a lot more shadow and I feel like it adds a lot more depth to the environment as well and I really like it. If your edges are still looking a little bit jagged, which I feel like mine are, you can also go ahead and actually add FXAA, which will help with the edge smoothing and you can just mess with that i would just drag these until like you see some change happen on your screen last but not least and probably the most important the blurry background in my preset the blurry background which is adof is actually bound to a hotkey if there is no hotkey next to this you're gonna have to manually turn this on and off 
by checking it. But as you can see, when I do that, it adds some really nice blurry background. You don't wanna play with this. Let me show you what this looks like when you play with this. It's really hard to see what's going on. You mostly wanna use this for screenshots. If I put up the walls here and I'm gonna remove my UI by hitting F10, and then I toggle on that depth of field, you can see it is blurring the background quite nicely. It does kind of get confused a little bit with mirrors, but if you hold left click, you can actually use reshade like you would use a camera by focusing it. So that's what those lines are. And wherever you see those purple lines, the center of it, that is where it is going to focus the camera. I should also add, make sure you don't hold that left click while you are taking a screenshot because those lines will show on your screenshot. It's really nice, just makes for some beautiful pictures. And obviously I would go ahead and hit print screen and that would send a picture to that director we talked about earlier what a phenomenal photo just beautiful beautiful face so you may be wondering what does the game look like without well here is what the game would look like without reshade just regular sims 3 and then here is with reshade it's just some minor adjustments that really brighten up the environment make it look a lot better is it a necessity no is it for everybody no does it really add that much difference probably not no but but it's pretty easy to install and just takes a couple minutes to set up. One of the questions that is often asked with this program is, will it add lag to your Sims 3 game? Maybe, yes, no, probably. <laughs> Honestly, it's going to differ based on your PC specs. I'll put mine on screen right now. Also, if you have my Sims 3 Ultimate Fixes guide applied. I've been playing with Reshade in my Sims 3 Pleasant View series here. For a couple of weeks, I've played five sim links at this point. The lag is pretty, it, it's not really that bad, to be honest. However, the outcome of this question is going to depend on your computer hardware. I feel like that's what it always boils down to. I wanted to leave a little note that depending on the reshade preset you install, for example, this one, which I linked to, it's called Sims 3 Reshade Omnibus Edition by Erasable Dinosaur. There will be a folder called Reshade Shaders. If you go in your Sims 3 installation directory where we went before, Reshade actually installed a folder called just that, Reshade-Shaders. If you go in here, there is two additional folders called Shaders and Textures. And then if you go even deeper, you can see there are a bunch of random textures in here. So these are actually from Reshade and for Reshade creators themselves to use. You don't want to delete them because some effects may be built off of these textures right here. However, if you see these, for example, in some of Erasable Dinosaur's presets, all you have to do is simply just open up the folder. So I am in textures. You would just copy all of these and paste them on in here. Some of them are going to say that they have the same file name. You can just replace them. And you want to make sure you have all of the textures that are necessary for each one of the effects, depending on which one you're gonna use. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the shaders. Just hit Control plus A, highlight everything, drag and drop it in, and replace anything with the same files. If you ever wanted to uninstall Reshade for whatever reason, all you would have to do is run that Reshade setup modded EXE, once again, that we did in the beginning of this video. Hit more info, run anyway hit OK, navigate to ts3.exe where we installed it. We can hit next, direct X9, and then you would go here to uninstall. So basically just do what we did to install the program. And then when you're faced with the screen, just click uninstall and you can get rid of it that way. I hope my Sims 3 reshade guide could help some of you out. And a card at the end, I will also put my Sims 3 visual guide. So all of my default eye replacements, hair replacements, clothes replacements, skin replacements, anything visual that you saw in this video, minus reshade, I will leave a link to at the end in a card. Anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.